My name is Robert Garland, and I'm resident choreographer for the Dance Theater of Harlem and also director of the Dance Theater of Harlem School. My piece features 10 dancers and is set to the music of Mozart. I really, really am a believer in the idea of legacy. There is an um, um, African term, Sankofa, which essentially says that you have to uh, uh, know the past in order to move forward into the future. And so part of my um, intention with the ballet, and just in general with, I think, just the world, is just getting uh, dancers to experience what uh, a standard is um, within the classical canon. Um, and there are elements to some of that older music that retain some of what I feel very African-American and African-centered uh, rhythms and syncopations that you do not get in contemporary classical music. You know, so there's a moment for uh, my uh, principal dancer where he is performing ostensibly an African uh, movement, African West African movement, uh, in a in a classical context, both balletically and musically. So that is part of what has always moved me. I do contemporary things as well, um, and I've used contemporary composers as well. But there's nothing like uh, reinventing the old for a new audience. If someone is new to ballet and is a little reticent, you know, in terms of approaching it, Mozart is very similar uh, to what you would feel when you first heard your hip, first hip hop, your first jazz, your first song that you fell in love with, whether it was Taylor Swift or Biggie Smalls. If there's a, a, a central or takeaway emotion in the work, uh, I would I would call it joy. I would say joy is what you could take away from uh, both the, the movement and the music. Uh, Mozart does both. He brings you to joy, he takes you a little down and he brings you back up again, just like a good Baptist preacher. You know, uh, there is not a narrative except in what is creating the person's mind that's watching it. Often when I teach my own choreographic uh, uh, classes now, like, I, I bring in a lot of art, you know, because, because uh, art has the things that you need to make a, theater, a piece for the theater. Space, depth, relationship, like all of those things. And so, so that's a very important part of my process in terms of getting people to understand how it all comes together. Because at the end of the day, and I get this from Arthur Mitchell, he always said, it's theater. You know, at the end of the day, it's theater. It's not your personal preference. It's what the theater is. One of the things I love about Robert is that he is such a historian, so whenever I work with him or other dancers work with him, it's always like this expansion and it's like you learn so much in the process about the art itself. I also completely trust Robert in the studio to create good vibes. Robert really makes sure that we all feel safe in the studio, that we all feel uplifted. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice, oh my God, yes. Yes, I felt something. <laughs> very, very good. What are you doing? It is meaningful to be in this festival. I, I believe that um, San Francisco is pretty far flung from New York City. It's been great coming out here and seeing the level of dedication, uh, uh, expertise, and quite frankly love from both the uh, dancers, the artistic staff, and the administrative staff as well. The future of ballet is, uh, I would say, diversity. But I would use, I would lean more towards the American idea of pluralism. Because it's not just about a skin color, it's also about idea. And so I would say the future of ballet is pluralism. I know it's not as sexy, but yes. <laughs>